All right, all right. First things first, Bank Trade Alerts is currently sitting at 48% year to date. And you can see here on the bank account, ever since the end of October, Bank was buying up the dip, getting ready for this huge rally. And we've been making money during this entire rally, while a lot of people were caught off guards or even shorting this rally. Now, these are actual trades, and this is the actual performance that you would have if you were a Bank Trade Alerts member. And there's a big difference between talking about being a good trader and actually having proof that you are a good trader. And you can see from this equity curve, we have absolutely been crushing this market on bank trade alerts this year. This is a market a lot of quote unquote experts have been getting wrong all year long, claiming that we were in a bear market and getting ready to crash. Yet bank trade alerts continued to slice and dice and absolutely crush the market, as you can tell from this performance. Also keep in mind, Bank Trade Alerts only swing trades and it only trades the TQQ and the SQQ ETF, even though the SQQs is not required if you do not want to short the market. You can still get that Black Friday sale, which is expiring very soon. So if you want to become a member of Bank Trade Alerts and check it out, now is the best time to do so with that Black Friday sale. All you need to do is use the coupon code Black Friday, all one word, no spaces, and you will get 50% off your first month of Bank Trade Alerts. If you're an existing bank member, don't forget to save money by upgrading to the annual plan using the coupon code ANNUAL and you'll get an additional 10% off the already discounted annual plan. So we absolutely crushed the market in 2023 and I'm very confident 2024 is also going to be a very successful trading year. So let's go crush this market together. Now, just a quick reminder, bank only trades the T triple Qs and we have five algorithms that trade that. And then we have four algorithms that trade the S triple Qs. And essentially what you're doing is you are putting 20% into each trade every time you get a trade alert. So there is times where you have a lot of cash on hand, which is great for risk management. And all of these alerts will send you buy and sell alerts directly so you never have to guess which trade you're supposed to be in. You'll get the alert of when to buy the T triple Q and when to sell it. And you'll also get an alert when to buy the S triple Q and when to sell it. Although there are some risk profiles that do not short the market. So you would only take the trades for the T triple Qs if you did not want to short the market. This is a very simple system to follow. You are only trading one or two ETFs and all of the alerts are sent directly to you via text and email. So if you want to come crush the market and you want a service offered by me, Bank Trade Alerts is the answer and this is the service you're going to want to join. All right, moving on to SPY, you can see we we're up 0.59% on Friday and we are still closing above the daily 5 EMA. So we still haven't had any price action breaking down on SPY to tell us we're getting ready for this pullback. Even though I do think before the end of the year, there's a very good chance we're coming down here towards this gap fill at 441 but we need the price action to prove it by at least breaking down below the 5 EMA to tell us that we're rolling over what we did on Friday was significant because we did get a daily close above the July closing high which was that level just below 458 which means there's a very good chance we're going to push straight to 460 and if we break 460 we're going to start pushing higher towards 467 now these numbers are starting to get up to the previous all-time high and that could be where we're heading but keep in mind even if we're going to the previous all-time high there's a good chance we need a higher low before we can build up enough energy from the buyers and the bulls to push that high there is very slim chance we're going straight there and i'm not saying it's impossible i'm just simply telling you it's a slim chance but again let the price action do all the talking which is why i always use that saying this is a bull trend until it's not if this is not going to be a bull trend we'll see it in the price action rolling over and breaking down below the 5 ema and some of this support zone critical support right now will be the breakout above 457 and and the previous support right around 451 to 450. That's also the rising 20 daily moving average. So that's a very valid pullback area to look for if we start breaking down. If we can't hold that support, then we come back down towards 441 to 440. And we could test this demand zone, which was the breakout of the highs in October. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were up 0.29% on Friday and we recovered the pullback from Thursday, which did close down below the 5 EMA. And as of Friday, we're back above the 5 EMA, still in this bull trend and still above the July closing high right around 386. So if we're going to get the pullback in the triple Qs, we need to break down below that support at 386 and then 383. And below that, we're looking for a gap fill zone right around 378 or at least a test of this rising 20 daily moving average. If we break down below the gap fill at 378, then we come back down to test the October highs right around 370. If we continue higher and we can break this resistance at 393, look for the next price target higher at 396 and then 404. On the Dow Jones, we were up 0.85% on Friday and Friday we broke out above the gap fill zone, which was the price target at 360 and we closed outside the upper Bollinger Band on a very impulsive high volume move, which was more than likely a lot of short sellers getting caught off guards and getting squeezed out. On Thursday, we broke 
broke the July high right there at 356, which is obviously going to start triggering stop losses for those short sellers. And that's why we had that very strong push in two days. Now, that doesn't mean we're just going straight higher and straight to the next price target at 367, especially because we're outside the upper Bollinger Band. We're at extreme elevated risk of a pullback in the Dow Jones to at least retest this breakout right around 360 to 356. So I'm leaving that pullback projection right there at 356 because that's more than likely where we're heading. And then if we can hold that support and start forming higher lows, then we can start pushing higher towards the previous all time high. So we'll need to see the price action rolling over. And I don't expect to see a lot of buyers out here at this overextended overbought condition. So be very careful if you're chasing the Dow Jones here. On the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were up 2.92% on Friday, and this is something the bulls needed to see because the small caps have been lagging behind all year long. And as you can tell from the chart, the small caps are just now starting to break over the 200 daily moving average. So they have been underperforming all year and just now finally starting to play catch up, which is a very bullish indication. If you're bullish, you want to see the small caps continuing to climb higher towards 190, which is a very likely scenario now that we're starting to break above that resistance at 181. So stay bullish above this 200 daily moving average support zone between 180 and 181. And we were already staying bullish above 174. So just simply move your risk level from 174 now to 180. Above 180, we start pushing higher towards 190. And if we could break 190, we start pushing higher again towards 200. On the RK ETF, we were up 5.03% on Friday. And we're very close to that price target just below 49. And if we can break through that price target and continue climbing higher, then we'll start pushing higher towards 50.7. If we start pulling back at any point, look for strong support right around 45.7, 44.6, and 43.2. On the VIX, we were down 2.25% and the VIX is still sitting at this support zone that we've been bouncing from all year long. And I still think we're going to see the VIX bouncing during the pullback to the higher low before we continue higher at all time highs. So look for the VIX to bounce higher towards 15 and 16 in the very near future. On Bitcoin, we're currently trading just under the price target at 40,000 because we did get the bull break above that resistance at 38,000. We still have the bull trend and we're now bullish above 38,000. So that's your risk level. And the next upside price targets are just under 40,500 and then just under 42,000. On Tesla stock, we were down 0.52% on Friday and Tesla is trying to get back into this wedge, even though it did look like it was trying to break out. But this is a false breakout look because we couldn't hold that breakout and we gave it all back. But this is a strong support zone between 230 and 234. But if that support fails, we're looking for the gap fill at 225 and a test of the 200 daily moving average. If we get the bull breakout above 244 to 247, look for the next price target higher at 255 and 261. On Apple stock, we were up 0.68% on Friday and Apple is trying everything in its power to hold this support zone at 190 to start pushing higher towards 194 and 197. If we lose support at 190, look for a gap fill at 186 and a test of support at 185. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, the indices are all looking bullish, but they're getting very vertical rallies. And we're now finally starting to see the small caps catching up. So we are looking more and more likely that we are going to continue a bull rally, but that doesn't mean we're not expecting a higher low pullback before we can test and break those previous all time highs. So be very disciplined in your long trades. Make sure you know exactly where you're managing risk and you can stay long as long as we're above critical support and keep being the bull trend. Once we break support and start to roll over, you know exactly which price targets we're looking for during the pullback. So continue to be disciplined and patient and always manage your risk around these critical levels. No matter what your trade plan, it always comes back down to risk management and discipline. And if you're taking on too much risk for very little reward, you are never going to become a profitable trader. So learn how to manage your risk right now and continue to learn how to be a disciplined trader. As I said in the introduction, we are crushing the market on bank trade alerts. So if you want to come crush the market with us, don't forget to claim that Black Friday sale, which is expiring very soon. I also have the stock show on Discord where you get access to all of my intraday updates and analysis. And you can find out how to join either service by clicking on the links below. So thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.